Hey everyone, welcome back to Pseudotech and welcome to the second episode of my series of Linux from Scratch version 8.2. This is again the third time that I've been doing the LFS system build and we're updating it to 8.2 this time on Ubuntu 18.04. In the previous video we set up the host system and in this video we're going to set up the first package which is binutils. We're also going to go through a couple other things that we need to know as we go on with the building process in chapter 5. Again, if you're following along, you should make sure to check out the LFS book at linuxscratch.org slash LFS. Here you're going to find all of the commands just written out nicely so that you can copy and paste them into your terminal, and it'll just make the whole process a lot easier. It also has a little bit more information on some of the more technical things, which I won't be covering in as much detail because the point of this is to get you up on your feet with Linux from Scratch system as soon as possible and cover some of the things that the book itself does not cover. So the first thing that we're going to cover is what you're going to have to do every time you start up your computer. So if you restart it, a couple of variables are set. The disks aren't necessarily mounted all correctly. So we're going to have to do that each time. Now, it is possible to program these into your computer so that it does it automatically. Um, but I'm just going to briefly go through those quickly to show you what you would have to do if you didn't do this in the past. Um, so those three things are mounting all your disks. You're going to have to export the LFS variable yet again. And then finally, for chapter five, we're going to switch to the LFS user. So I've got them all written out nicely over here. I'll also include this in the video description. Very simple commands. You're just going to do export LFS is equal to slash mount slash LFS. There we go. And to check that again, we can do echo LFS. Just pointing to mount slash LFS, which is perfect. Then we're going to mount our directories. So we're going to do sudo mount dash v dash t ext4. This is for the main directory, which again, for me is at slash dev slash vdb2. Um, but for you, this could be sdb. It could be something different. Make sure you check. I explained that in the previous video. And we're mounting that to slash mount slash lfs, which we can call with the lfs variable that we just set. There we go. Type in your password. And it should be good to go. Next, we're going to mount our boot partition. Again, this is slightly optional. Um, you can just do this on the main partition. I like keeping it separate though. That's what we discussed in the last video again. We're going to mount that as an ext2 type format to the LFS partition or the LFS partition slash directory um, slash boot. There we go. And now as you can see, if I show the contents of the directory that I'm currently in, um, you can see that we've got our sources, we've got our tools directory, and we've got the boot, which is actually a different thing. If we navigate to sources, you should see all of your packages, um, which are right there, which we, of course, downloaded in the last video. If you haven't done that, of course, check that out first, because that is a requirement to continue. Um, next, we can mount, or not really mount, but start our swap space. So that's, so that's slash sbin slash swap on dash v for verbose. And I set mine to VDB3. Um, of course, that could be different for you uh, for all the other ones. And there we go. Lastly, we're going to switch to the LFS user using su um, dash LFS. Type in the password. And there we are. So now we can continue where the book left off with SBUs. Now, SBUs are a unit of measurement that's pretty handy when you're compiling different things. Of course, depending on the number of cores you have, the amount of RAM sometimes, um, and other factors that make up your computer, the amount of time it takes to compile every package is going to vary by actually quite a bit. As For example, here it shows um, that GLIBC could take at best about 20 minutes on a really fast system, but it could take up to three days on slower systems. I generally experience it to take a couple of hours on slower systems for me, um, which is what I'm usually running on, but of course that's going to depend for GLIBC and other packages as well. SBUs are a way to somewhat standardize those measurements. So one SBU is basically the amount of times it takes binutils, which we're going to be compiling shortly, to compile and make itself and get all set and ready to go. And then you can apply that because other packages are going to say how many SBUs they take. So if it took two SBUs, then it would take twice as long as it took you to compile binutils, which will give you a nice idea of about how long this package is going to take to compile and go through an entire process. They also mention a little bit farther down about how you can use the dash J4 flag, or here it says dash J2, but I'm going to be using dash J4 um, to enable multi-threaded compiling. So 
to do this, whenever you run make, you can do dash J and then the number of cores you want to use. So in my case, I'm going to be using four. So I'm going to be pretty consistently using dash J four for different commands to make it a little bit of a faster process since it's going to be using multiple cores and utilizing your whole processor. You should keep in mind that when you get errors using this, it can be a lot harder to analyze them. Um, so if you do get errors, I would recommend go ahead and doing it again without doing the, the make dash J4 and just make normally um, with one core. And that'll allow you to read the error messages more easily and figure out what the issue is. There's a little bit of information on test suites, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but in chapter five, they're not really necessary. So let's go ahead and move on to our first package, which is binutils. Now I'm gonna skip through all of this information. I would recommend reading it because it is pretty helpful, um, but we're just gonna go through everything we need to know on the first package, binutils. There's a little bit of information about how you should have the host system requirements, which we set up earlier, how you should have the LFS variable set, which we just set and just check so it's good, um, and then the basic process for compiling each of the packages and unpacking them, which I'll walk through right here for binutils, our first package. So the first step is going to be to get to the directory that has all of our packages. So that would be our sources directory. So we can do LFS slash sources. And here are all of packages. Um, and then we're going to unpack the package that we need. So in this case, this is bin utils. So we're going to do tar dash x for extract and f for file to specify it. Um, and then bin, and then we can just use tab to autocomplete it to bin utils and then press enter. Now this will take a while, sometimes I like to do dash xvf for the larger file so it shows it all going out. It's just kind of satisfying to see everything going and make sure it's actually working. But this worked pretty quickly. Um, and then we're going to, you can see that we should have a new binutils folder, which is right here, I'm highlighting it. And we can change directory to that right now. So we're going to change directory to binutils, the folder. And this is all the contents of the extracted binutils package. Now, every process is going to be slightly different, but from this point on, we're basically going to pick up with what the book says. Um, it's not going to tell you to do the extraction and change the directory. It's going to assume that you're going to do that because that's always the same for pretty much all of the packages. So now we're going to make a new directory um, as per the binutils requirements. So we're going to make a build directory. And then we're going to change directory to that build directory. There we go. And at this point, all of the commands are going to go under um, that SBU time after this. So that's, again, going to give you an idea for what future builds are going to be take. So I'd recommend that you time it. You can use this command here. So just use time and the standard Linux shell um, to figure out how long it all takes. I'm just going to time it on my phone because that's easier. So we're going to start the clock now. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit off, but not a big deal. Copy the configure commands. There we go. It's going to go through those and set up the environment. We're going to do make. And again, I can use dash J4 to speed up the process a little bit. And then if we're building on an x86-64 system, so a 64-bit system, we do need this symbolic link. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in um, to set it up. Okay, so at this point, I realized that I had made a mistake in the previous video, and I changed the ownership of the sources directory, which as you can see here belongs to LFS, um, but not the tools directory, which I was supposed to do also, which was preventing me from making the symbolic link. Um, so that's a super simple fix. We're just going to do sudo chown or change ownership um, to LFS of the LFS variable slash tools. There we go. And now we can log back into the LFS user and type the password and then change directory back to the sources directory. Um, and the build and the bin the sources directory and the bin utils directory and the build within that. And now we should be able to run the command just fine to make the symbolic link on 64-bit systems. There we go, and we've got the symbolic link. So now I'm going to restart my timer because I did pause it then. It's not going to be entirely accurate um, to do the make install step, which should finish off the process. 
At this point, we want to make sure that there's no errors up here. So if you get to all of these make steps and it's leaving some directories, scroll up a little bit just to verify that and you should be good to go after that. You want to be sure, especially with the larger packages, that you're not getting any errors because those will call, cause even more issues down the road and then you may have to recompile some things. So all in all, that took me about two minutes. Um, let's say a little bit less than that because I did have some issues with it. That was just an overset on my part. Um, but that would be our what our SBU value is. So on the next package, which we're going to be getting to in the next video, GCC is 8.8 .8 SBU, so multiply that by 2 would be 17.6. Um, that's how many minutes it's going to take roughly to, for us to compile GCC on my machine. Now we still have one more step to do for the bin utils. It's not uh, like required, but it's still pretty important if you want to maintain cleanliness. So we're going to change directory 2 back to the original sources directory. As you can see, again, we have the bin utils tar file in the bin utils folder. We no longer need the bin utils folder because it's actually going to be built into the tools directory. Um, there you go. We've got a couple things in there. So we can actually delete that folder just to save some space. We are going to maintain the bin utils tar file. Um, just in case we have to go back later, but the binutils folder isn't really useful, especially since binutils is pretty quick to unpack. So we're going to just do rm r um, and binutils. Yes, do we have permission? Yes, we do. Okay, and there we go. Um, and then as you can see, we're just left with the tar file. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully, I will be continuing with further videos in a little bit more of a timely manner than I have previously, um, but we'll get through all of it eventually. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.